Hello and welcome to the Sim Racing Corner. Today we're reviewing the new Thrustmaster T248 wheelbase and pedal set. This device is compatible with Windows PCs and PlayStation 4 and 5 consoles. In this review we are just focusing on PC gaming and we will be testing the T248 in a number of popular titles later in the video when we talk about its performance. Price and feature-wise, the T248 is positioned between the entry and mid-range racing wheel category and sits above Thrustmaster's entry-level T150 and TMX and a hair below the mid-range T300 and TX. Interestingly, the T248 borrows some elements from both entry-level and mid-range. This is something that becomes apparent when we dive in deeper. The wheelbase motor and electronics are packed into this compact hard plastic housing. The power supply is an external 48 watt unit, good for an estimated 3.5 newton meters of peak torque force feedback. The 28 centimeter wheel rim is fixed. It doesn't have the Thrustmaster quick release system. Do remember that, so you cannot swap out the wheel rim. What you see is what you get with this wheelbase. The rim is constructed from plastic for comfort and grip, what looks like leather is a foam layer surrounding the outer edge. The face of the wheel is equipped with many buttons along with a couple of rocker switches for a total of 21 inputs. The buttons have the tactile feel of gamepad controller buttons. The integrated digital display has a couple of uses. Firstly, for making on-the-fly setting changes, including selecting PC or console compatibility, altering the wheel angle rotation, and three unique force feedback profiles. We'll take a look at these profiles later on the track. The second use for the display is piping through car dashboard telemetry. Gear indicator, speed, RPM, track position, and lap timer are all selectable. All useful stuff, the game does need to support specific display data output to the T248, so compatibility is not guaranteed, it's entirely down to the game developer. For the first time on a Thrustmaster wheel, without modding we have magnetic based shifter paddles. This gives each shift a positive tactile action, but also produces a loud snap in both directions. I fear not everyone will be a fan, as shifting gears is rather noisy with these paddle shifters. We have the standard Thrustmaster table clamp, which you'll find on every other Thrustmaster wheelbase. It gets the job done. I do find the clamp works best on thinner tabletops for a more stable solid mount and less likely to wobble. When we remove the table clamp, we can see where the cables plug into the wheelbase. You will also discover two threaded holes for hard mounting to a dedicated wheel stand or cockpit setup. Take note of the grill on the left. Those holes are for the internal motor cooling fan. They work alongside the holes on the top of the case to allow cool air to circulate and exhaust heat. The T248 conforms to the standard 900 degrees of maximum wheel rotation. Spinning the wheel, there is some feeling of notchiness from the tooth belt and gear mechanism, along with some resistance from friction and what I would describe as a rubbing noise when turning the wheel. The Thrustmaster T3PM pedal set that is part of this package may resemble Thrustmaster's excellent T LCM pedals, which I have reviewed on the channel, but do not get them confused as they don't share identical features. Outwardly, they have the same size and shape, but this pedal set does not have a metal heel plate, metal pedal arms, or a load cell brake pedal. So one could consider the T3PM pedals as a cut down version of the TLCM pedals. All three pedals use analog magnetic sensors for taking input. That's great for durability as they are non-contact parts, meaning there's nothing to wear out and fail. 
The throttle and clutch pedal springs are hidden away so can't be adjusted. However, the brake spring is accessible, enabling you to swap out the spring. You get two springs, one of which is already installed. The instructions show four brake resistance configurations you can try out. Rubber feet provide grip, but we also get M6 screw holes, one in each corner for hard mounting the pedals. Before we head over to the track, a brief look at the Thrustmaster driver software. If you have any previous experience with any other model of Thrustmaster force feedback wheel, then there's nothing new to show you, it's all very familiar stuff. Um, you can test the wheel, buttons and pedal inputs to make sure everything is running fine, um, adjust the wheel angle rotation and sliders for basic settings. I would recommend you disable spring and damper as they may affect the quality of the in-game force feedback effects, but that is something you can experiment with. Next up, we're taking this onto the track for my performance evaluation. I experienced zero game compatibility issues, and that is to be expected when you take into account Thrustmaster is a big brand in this sector, so support is guaranteed. New and old games alike are certainly going to work with the T248. The first thing I noticed taking the wheelbase out of the box is it is lightweight, weighing slightly over two and a half kilograms, for reference, the similarly priced Logitech G923 wheelbase is around 2.7 kilograms. That said, the T248 force feedback strength is significantly stronger than the Logitech G923. The T248 is mostly constructed from plastic parts, pretty much like any other wheelbase around this price point really, and despite it being plastic, it feels well planted and solid on the sim rig. The build quality is about right for a wheelbase of this price, offering nothing more or less than I would expect compared to competing products. The feel of the plastic wheel rim does come across as cheap. Ergonomically, the grip area is molded for comfort, and thick enough for adult hands. The soft layer partially covering the outside helps, but you can't avoid grabbing the inside of the rim and feeling that hard plastic, and that does make it feel more like a toy wheel. Um, it would have been nice to have seen uh, some sort of rubber coating on the hard plastic parts where your fingers grip on the wheel. I think that would have helped. The buttons are neatly arranged and easy to identify, and well placed for easy reach of your thumbs. The digital display is a nice addition, although the placement of the display is far below your eye line, it remains a useful feature for a quick glance down again, for checking your gear speed or lap time etc. The button labelled display enables you to switch between the data shown. The magnetic shifter paddles feel solid, there's no flex or play, just the strong tactile snap as you pop a gear. It feels pretty good, um, but they are loud, that's something to bear in mind. It is a noise that does travel even with a door closed, and at night you may not be popular in your household. Thrustmaster have stated that the T248 is 70% more powerful than the T150 and TMX. Just as a reminder, the T150 and TMX are Thrustmaster's cheapest force feedback racing wheels. And this is something you can tell immediately. The T248 is able to output a decent amount of power and certainly a good step up over those aforementioned wheelbases. A more powerful motor enhances the force feedback effects and that is a good thing. In fact, with respect to the power output of the T248, it is pretty close to the T300 and TX. Not quite, but close enough, it's hard to tell a difference. 
The wheelbase uses what Fussmaster has labelled their next-gen hybrid drive system. Those are the exact words from the product page. The fact is, Fussmaster are known for marketing product features to sound more impressive than reality, and that is the case here too. There is nothing next-gen about their hybrid system. It is merely a toothed gear and belt-driven mechanism, the same type of mechanism used by the cheaper T150 and TMX. That's been around for years, and what you have here really is just a more powerful motor using the same type of mechanism. And that is something to bear in mind. The mechanism in question does not provide completely smooth low friction wheel rotation. You can feel the notches as individual small bumps. It's an ever-present sensation on top of the force feedback. When turning the wheel, you can hear it and feels like what I would describe is similar to a pepper grinder. I discovered running the force feedback strength at 80% prevented clipping any higher and the wheel became heavy and numb, washing out force feedback detail. At 80% strength, it remains powerful enough to deliver decent punchy effects, riding over curbs, grass, gravel, collisions, all the main sort of things you would expect. Those sensations are strong and detailed enough that everything feels meaningful and distinct. Though power limitations of the motor and the wheel friction doesn't enable finely detailed and some subtle nuance effects to pass through, what you get is the medium and strong effects. That's perfectly acceptable for a wheelbase of this tier. Gauging the limit of tyre grip is vague, um, so hitting a corner you immediately get the maximum counter force resistance the motor is able to supply. There is no build up or range and every corner feels the same through that counter force resistance. That's nothing unusual here, I fully expected that, even the higher tier T300 and TX have the same limitation. When the car becomes unsettled, the force feedback does relay this quite well. You can feel the weight transfer of the car shifting through the wheel and you can tell the car is about to lose the back end and you have enough warning to make corrections. A good test for the force feedback is whether the quality of the effects coming through the wheel is a useful driving aid and can that help you understand the stability of the car and help you keep the car under control. And the good news is yes, the T248 did prove to be good enough for the driving sims I ran it through. Finally, I want to touch upon the three force feedback profiles that are only accessible through the onboard wheel menu settings. An interesting and unique force feedback post-processing option, which I do think does make a small but meaningful enhancement to the delivery of the force feedback. Results may vary as each driving game generates force feedback physics differently, but I recommend you try them out. I ended up settling on option three. I felt it boosted the clarity of the effects quite nicely. Pedals make an awful lot of difference to the driving experience, and just as the T248 is a completely new product, so are the T3PM pedals. I was very happy with the performance here. Proportionally, they are a full-sized pedal set and comfortable to use. Having already used and reviewed the Thrustmaster TLCM load cell based pedals, these cheaper T3PM pedals were easy for me to get up and running as they are from the same blueprint. Materially, obviously not identical, we have more plastic parts and we don't have the load cell based brake. Nevertheless, they feel solid and I was surprised how well I got on with the more basic brake. I felt I had a good measure of control, judging my braking inputs with consistency. The brake pedal travel is quite long and combined with the decently strong resistance from the spring, works together very well. I'd go as far as to say these are the best non-load cell pedals I've used so far, better than the Thrustmaster T3PA pedals and outshining the Logitech pedals too. Normally I'm not a fan of cheap pedals, but credit where credit's due, these T3PM pedals are actually quite good and that's all you need to know and that's as much as I can tell you about them. They did a really good job and I was really happy with their performance. And now on to the final part of the review. The way I would describe the T248 is it's kind of like using an upgraded T150 or TMX since it is using the same type of internal 
hybrid mechanism and so the feeling of the wheel sort of feels the same but we have more power so of course that is better since the force feedback is stronger uh, plus we have the extra features like the inbuilt wheel display and selectable force feedback profiles and a rather decent set of pedals. So it is a nice step up over those cheaper products, but all the same, it does remind me of a T150 or TMX, but just with more grunt behind it. But our T248 isn't quite as powerful or refined as the T300 or TX. Those wheelbases deliver more detail from the force feedback due to their smoother rotating internal mechanisms. Price-wise, the T248 sits above the T150 and TMX and below the T300 and TX, and that makes perfect sense. It outperforms the T150 and TMX, but remains inferior to the T300 and TX. So taking that into account, the T248 slots into the Thrustmaster product stack exactly where it should be. I do wish the T248 had the smoothness of the T300 and TX without that pepper grinder element and I would have been happy to give it a full thumbs up in that case. Um, I'm not saying I had a bad time with it, it ran decently well and has positive features. But also some compromises, none of which are fatal flaws but simply lack of refinement. I don't hate the T248 but I don't love it either. I have mixed feelings on this one guys, a few tweaks and it could have been really good because it's not bad, it's satisfactory. I suppose the £300, $350 price tag isn't an unfair reflection of price to performance. Considering the T248 competes against the Logitech G923 and that's not perfect either. So maybe I'm being a bit harsh on this one, I'm not sure, I haven't decided. But I can't stop help thinking, spending a little bit more for the superior T300 or TX is a much better deal. And honestly, that would be my preference, which is why I'm a bit torn on this one. But I do like the pedals though, so that's something. Okay then, that was my review for the Thrustmaster T248 wheel and pedal set. I hope you found this video useful and please do feel free to drop comments below the video. It's always good to hear your feedback. Also, you may be interested in my other wheelbase reviews. There's a list in the video description. I have reviewed quite a few other wheelbase brands and models, so you may find that useful. As always guys, thank you very much for watching and until next time, happy simming and bye bye.